Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for my very first Buy This, Not That. This video was inspired by you because I get so many wonderful questions that I don't even think of when I'm talking about products, but sometimes the products are close together or they're released at the same time by different companies and you want to know which one you should invest in. So a couple of these were taken straight from questions you gave me and then a couple more I just thought about, oh, these are very similar, so let me give my thoughts on that. And it doesn't necessarily mean the product I'm not recommending or I'm saying to not buy is a bad product Product, but it might be something specific you're looking for. And I know I feature some quite high-end products, so I also want to highlight products that are not necessarily dupes, but something very close that approximates that product. So I think this is a great format to answer those questions, starting with the one that's directly from you. There was a question about these two powders. We have the Perfect Blur Powder by Shantikai, which is my everyday go-to powder, perfects the discoloration, uh, on top of concealer. Sometimes I need a little bit more help. And it also helps perfect the appearance of the surface of the skin as well. And then the question was, do I choose this or this Charlotte Tilbury? This is called the Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Powder. And this is the one that has a glow to it. Now, if I was going to only choose one powder, I would choose this one hands down because without this, this one doesn't look as good on me. So I would use this more as a finishing powder not to set. So I think these look better together. This gives a little bit of glow, brings out bone structure. But again, if I don't have that base perfected with this powder, this is not going to perform nearly as well. So I would pick this one first. I would use these in tandem and I know the natural. Next question is, what do I think about the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Glow Powder compared to this? And I haven't had a chance to wear them side by side and really examine them, um, but I will definitely do that for you maybe in an upcoming Buy This Not That. So if I was going to say which one to buy, depends on your needs, but for me I would buy this over this. If you have beautiful skin, I think you can go in with this and it would be just fine. But for my needs, I just need to perfect this first. Uh, and I would rather go with this first versus this. So even though I recommend this, it's because I use these in tandem. This next one is from the Chanel Holiday Collection. And actually, you're going to see a lot of holiday collections right now because now's the time to grab them if you wanted them because they are limited edition and I can give you my thoughts on what I think is worth investing in. But for the lip shades, I picked up two, well actually I picked up more than two, I think I picked up maybe five lip shades from the Chanel Holiday Collection. And this is the Rouge Allure Lac in Rouge Ombre. And this is the one that had some shimmer in it and was more drying on the lips and also emphasize texture because of the metallic element in here. It's a slight metallic finish. Um, so I did not enjoy this one, but I really loved this one. This one is number 824. And when I applied this today, I just used my clean hands to kind of soften the edges here. And then also I just patted on like this so it wasn't as glossy appearing. It's not a glossy lipstick, but it definitely has more shine to it uh, than typical lipsticks. And I think it looks really pretty. It's more like a stain with a lot of hydration. Really beautiful. So I think this is a lovely color. It's definitely more wearable, more comfortable than this Rouge Allure Lac. Here's another question. I was asked the Hourglass Elephant Palette or the NARS Rising Star Blush Palette. They're so different. That's what's tricky about these two. So I'm going to say if you love blush, and you're a blush connoisseur and you love to try different blush formulas and you're looking for a skin perfecting kind of blush, I would go with the NARS Rising Star Palette because it's a unique formula. It really just adheres very closely to the skin so it's not sitting on top of the skin like powder. And you get all of these shades which are blushes and then there's a very gentle highlighter in there. So the only thing that's in here are blushes and highlight, but in this Hourglass Elephant Palette. This one is good if you don't have a lot of makeup or you just want a lot of what you would use in one palette because this one has two blushes, a bronzer, it has two finishing powders, which are lovely, and then this highlighter here. So if you want an all-in-one kind of palette, then I would go for the Hourglass Elephant. Now this is more of a traditional powder formula, so it's going to sit on the skin differently than the NARS Rising Star Palette. It's got a more powdery kind of element to it. It's, it doesn't look powdery on the skin, but they're just so different. So uh, yeah, so if you want bronzer, blush, 
a finishing powder and highlighter together. If I didn't have a lot of makeup, I would want this one over the NARS, but if I have as much makeup as I do, and I know a lot of you also have as much makeup as I do, and you're a blush lover, which I am, I would pick up the NARS Rising Star Palette, if I can open it. <laughs> this one right here. So that one's more of like a needs-based kind of decision. For me, if I was going to pick one, I would pick the NARS Rising Star, just because of the situation that I am in, in terms of having access to lots of beautiful makeup. It would be this one, but I still really love this. Oh yes, I also would pick the NARS Rising Star Palette over this Dior uh, blush. I really didn't fall in love with this blush, this one by Dior. I mean, it looks really pretty and I love the shade. It's 556. It's the um, limited edition one from Holiday. And the reason I didn't love this is because I could see a little bit of emphasized texture. There's some shimmer in here as well. So this one's a little bit harder to wear. This is a lot easier to wear. It looks really beautiful on. So again, this is more skin perfecting than something like this. Next up, eyeshadow palettes. And we already know I love this one by Dior. So I'm just going to call that one out. This is my favorite holiday palette of the season from Dior, from Chanel. Um, and Chantecai doesn't have an eyeshadow palette. Um, I do love their fall palettes though, so I will talk about that in a moment. But out of all the luxury beauty eyeshadow palettes for the holidays I've tried, this is my favorite one. And I didn't even think I was gonna pick this one up. But when I saw it in person, I thought, oh, these screens are very wearable because the photos looked like they were, I don't know, like just green, really green. But these are quite subdued and very classic colors. So right away, I'm gonna say, out of all the eyeshadow palettes for the holidays, I would go with this one. It's the Dior Backstage in 008 Khaki Neutrals. I have it on now. I have it in combination with another palette that I'm gonna talk about. So I just wanted to just talk about this really quickly before I start comparing other palettes, but this above the rest has been my favorite. I'm hoping this particular palette is still available by the time this goes up because I've seen it sell out in various places. It's the Chantecai Cougar palette, and I love this one. I loved this one because of the neat combinations. Wow, the unique combinations of colors. I really liked this tone right here, and then this shade is not shimmery, like really shimmery on the lids. It's quite soft um, on the lids, and I have it all over my lid right now, and I have that in combination with the Dior Backstage palette that I just showed you. So that green is in there with the Hourglass Forest eyeliner, but I put this one all over my lids. So this one reminded me of the Guerlain palette that I recently picked up. And I think that's why I was attracted to this because I was so happy with the Chantecaille that I let me try the Guerlain. So you can see the similarities there. You've got the, like a deeper shade. This is much deeper in the Guerlain, but you've got a gray shade here. And then this shade right here, like that shade reminds me of each other. And then it's kind of got a peachy tone, but not super peachy, but they weren't that similar when I got them, obviously, but the performance is also so different. And this one is much more versatile, much more wearable and not as fussy. Like this one's kind of temperamental. So you only have these two shades, which are softer in their shimmer, but these two are shimmery and more intermittent and not as opaque. So there's no real crease color here. And in this case, in the Cougar, um, you can use that as a crease color just fine. But this one I forgot to mention is 00011 Imperial Moon. So this one is a very sophisticated holiday palette, but it takes a little bit more skill, I think, to get this one to work versus this Cougar palette. But this one is just one that is something I would travel with versus this that I would use for a special occasion and probably wouldn't use it as often. So I definitely recommend the Cougar palette over the Guerlain 00, nope, 011 Imperial Moon. Now for the Chanel, this holiday palette, which I think I just used maybe once after that initial video because the look was much more peachy than I thought it would be. But I feel like if you want that peachy toned eyeshadow, then this one by Chanel, the Tweed. Um, actually, I love all the Tweed palettes. I have yet to use this one though, still. I think when I try the concealer, I'll use this one. That's the only one I haven't tried on camera yet. Or actually, I haven't tried it at all. Um, have I? Maybe I have, but I don't remember trying it if I did. But I know I haven't filmed it yet. We've got here the Chanel Holiday Palette, and then here is the 03 Tweed. And they don't look alike, 
but I think the result is that peachier toned eyeshadow, which again surprised me about this. I thought this was going to be more coppery, but it turned out more peachy toned on me. And if I'm going to pick a peachy toned palette, I'm going to pick this one instead because I really like the tweed formula. It's so pretty, very easy to work with, easy to blend. So if you were thinking about one of these two and you wanted a peachier, I would go with the tweed. But I do have more ideas about mascara and some of my holy grail products like La Prairie, um, some other items where I might suggest to buy this, not that, and maybe suggest not buying my holy grail products because the price points are quite high. So again, looking at more of those dupes or things that are close seconds, I think might be nice to look at. So let me know what else you would like me to compare because I do have lots of products that are very similar or the tones are very similar. So let me know what else you would like to see compared because I'd love to share what my experience has been with you so you can make some wise choices. But that is it for today's video, so please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.